Well, good afternoon, folks, and uh, welcome to yet another review video. Today we're looking at Fort Lauderdale Kilo Foxtrot Lima Lima. It's an airport by Latin VFR, payware product. Um, Fort Lauderdale is one of several airports in the Miami area, comes under the Miami control. And uh, we're looking towards the east out to sea. It's midday and you're looking at the layout of the airport as it is. So I said it's Latin VFR. I'll put up full details of the um, scenery, the download size, price and stuff in a moment so you'll be able to see and um, let's discuss the airport and uh, fill you in on some historical bits and pieces. So Fort Lauderdale is located in Broward County, Florida and it serves the Miami metropolitan area. The airport is bounded by the cities of Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood and Danaea Beach. The airport was built in 1929 and opened as initially as Merle Fogg Field with two unpaved runways. 1939, the airport was commissioned by the US Navy and it became the US Navy's Naval Air Station Fort Lauderdale and at that point the runways were paved. And they added a control tower. In 1946, uh, not long after the war, the Naval Air Station was closed and uh, the airport became Broward County International Airport, handed back to the civilians. 1953, first commercial flights began, initially to Nassau, which has proved to be a very popular route, as we'll see in a minute. 1958, they added flights to New York and the first terminal opened in 1959. 1974, some, some seven carriers operated out of what is now Fort Lauderdale International. Eastern and Delta were the dominant carriers for um, internal and uh, international flights. 1990, some low-cost airlines came along and began to operate. There was a big, quite a big growth in traffic. 2007, the airport first began charging fees to all users, including private aircraft, which was a first. I think the initial, the, the least you can pay is $10. Not sure if that's changed. 2016, Emirates began, or oh, Emirates had a code share with JetBlue, and so operated a flight from Dubai with a 777-200LR. Unfortunately, in 2020, the COVID year, that ceased operations. So, our statistics, the airport's got two runways, runway 10 left to 8 right is 9,000 feet or 2,743 meters in length and it's asphalt. Uh, 10 right to 8 left is a little shorter, 8,000 feet, 2,438 meters and is concrete. And there are 109 aircraft based permanently at uh, Fort Lauderdale as of 2019. The airport has four terminals. Terminal 1 opened between 2001 and 2003 in stages as building was completed. The three others were built in 1986. Terminal 1 has 23 gates, mainly international passengers. It's known as the Yellow Terminal. Terminal 2, known as the Red Terminal, has nine gates. Terminal 3, the Purple Terminal, has 20 gates. There's also a walkway connection to Terminal 4 from there. And Terminal 4, the green terminal, has 14 gates. Passenger traffic. In 2019, they had nearly 35 million passengers pass through this airport. Of course, this was before COVID. Um, greatly reduced when COVID came along. Busiest routes. Well, we've got 2018 figures. Um, the busiest route was Nassau, domestically. Uh, 504,000 passengers went on that route in just 2018 alone. Domestically, Atlanta was the busiest route with 551,000 passengers flying to Atlanta from Fort Lauderdale. So as you can see, Fort Lauderdale was a very prominent airport. Not quite as big as Miami, although Miami handles most of it. Fort Lauderdale probably is the second biggest operator in South Florida. So there you go, some very nice views. Um, the layout looks spectacular. Let's go and have a look at it at close quarters. So 
So we start with a slow run across the terminal area. As you can see, lots of detail. Um, and the trees placed, the roads, car parks. <laughs> it looks really good. Um, as I would expect from something like Latin VFR. Detail looks excellent. There's the car parks. Some cars on the roofs there. Lots of ground clutter. Uh, in a minute we'll have a look and see if there's anything inside the buildings. Looks quite nice. Got the highway there. Highway's low resolution, not terribly detailed. But that's okay. So there we are looking down runway 28 right. Nice view of the central area of the terminal. All the roads, highways in the right places. Um, Leading lights work, foliage. Um, airport sits very nicely in there. We'll have a really high um, high altitude look in a, in a few minutes. There you can see the roads that go into the airport. Again, very well detailed. Um, really makes a nice addition to the South Florida scenery area. So we're just tracking south now, so you can see the perimeter of the airport, the eastern perimeter, and you've got the docks there on the right hand side. Um, there's a nice atmosphere about this, the ambience looks good, it just fits quite well. And as you can see, um, it just kind of looks nice, fits there, highway looks good. The terminals, you've got road signs there on the left, and the foliage fits very well with the way the airport is laid out. No complaints at all. So there we are looking to the north. Again, runway 28 right there. Uh, the roads are nicely defined. Got road signs and hoardings. The uh, fauna looks really good, or the flora rather. Very nice visually. And looking out to sea, out to the coast, this is the sort of view you'd get coming into 28 right. Not sure how much of this is Latin VFR and how much of it is default, but uh, whatever it is, it's clear that the airport fits in well. Take a little look over here. It's really nicely detailed. I've got a feeling this is probably part of Latin VFR's scenery. So it's the coastal area with the docks, couple of cruise ships there. Beautiful beach actually, quite nicely defined. And looking across the, the, the docks there towards the airport, as you can see, looks really good. So looking at, nine, at uh, 28 left there, this is the runway here that's concrete and not asphalt, you can see the difference. got lead-in lights there, I don't know if they really work, they might be just hiles, high intensity, high intensity runway lights. But uh, as you can see that the, the airport has been well done, blends in very nicely with the default scenery. And looking down the coast towards the south, again, it just looks like a beautiful area to fly into. So let's go have a closer look at the terminals and see what we can see. That all looks very rugged and actually I think it's great. It looks very realistic, like the tunnels are there. And you can see the signs that we looked at a moment ago. Car park there with the with the trolley trolley roads going up into the car park. A little bit of texture popping here and there, but nothing serious. So let's have a look at Terminal Four. So 
So this is Terminal 4 and the gates. Again, lots of clutter. As far as I understand it, the jetways work. The ground markings are very realistic. They're, they're easily definable and you've got um, oil and fuel markings on, on the ground there. Lots of clutter. It's very nice. Gives the appearance of being a really nice tropical airport. Good view of the car park there. So let's have a look and see if there's any inside the terminal. Alright, so nothing on the ground. No, okay, so the terminal is not defined inside. How about the jetways? So this is the inside of a jetway. So they've got the step there. You can see the step. Okay, so you can see the inside really hasn't been developed, but that's okay, that's fine, just something worth looking at to see. How about the car parks? Go and have a look at a look at the car parks inside, see what we can see. So as you can see, we've got the car park levels there. Let's go up another floor. Okay, so the top level and the ground level is, is essentially done, but the inner ones aren't. Not bad, not bad at all. So see what we can see land side of the terminal. Well again, as you can see it's there, but it's not been developed. We've got some work done here. This is the upper level. Again, not really properly developed, but got the Hollywood signs. So, good start. So, a bit more definition there on the upper level. But uh, not as defined as, say, I might find in some of the airsoft sim wing sceneries where they've done a bit more work on the land side area with lights, signs and stuff like that. But it's fine, it's okay. So now we're passing Terminal 3, Foxtrot stands. Uh, you wouldn't expect to see um, Siberian Airlines here, but um, I've got certain things installed so they're showing. <laughs> but again, the stands look good. Plenty of oil stains, clutter, uh, the jetways work and they look really good actually. We've even got the um, air hoses underneath and the stairwells. Some nice detailing here down and down here look. Offices under the terminal. 
Again, you've got this kind of reflective stuff, gives you an illusion of something going on. Something I should mention is the vehicles, the quality of the vehicles are really good. The static vehicles like we've got here. I mean, look at the dirt on that baggage loader and the detail here in the cockpit. Excellent. And this vehicle is very, very nicely done. The model is excellent, especially things like, because you can sometimes notice with the writing. Very impressive. Let's just take a little walk through here. Very nice. Okay, got a cargo loader sitting off the ground there. But, in terms of detail, it's excellent. No complaints at all. See if there's anything inside here. I don't think there is. No. So no internal development inside the terminals. Which is fine. It's okay. I'm interested to see how all this looks in low light. We'll have a look in a bit. So let's pan across the Terminal 2 and Terminal 1. This is the extended Echo Pier. Terminal 2 here, Terminal 1 further on. Again, ground markings, taxiway markings, concrete colouring looks really good. Quick look there at the signage on the, on the taxiways and the entrance to the runway. Perfectly adequate. So Terminal 2 is on our right here. And Terminal 1 is further on. And this building looks really sort of interesting. I wonder if there might be anything inside that. See where it's been developed. We'll have a look. Oh no, this one has. There we go. So Terminal 2. You've got Peter up Burger King and Subway. A couple of uh, nice plants. That looks good. That's nice. further east towards Terminal 1. Again lots of good ground clutter, markings are good. There's another big building there, got a feeling that might be developed. Just going to have a look at that in a second. But visually this is excellent. Once again, you've got ground vehicles that are excellently detailed. Just come up a bit. So the internal inside of this terminal is developed. We'll go in and have a look. Very nice. Very nice deal done. That's a nice illusion. That It really looks like you've got depth of field there. So you've got Starbucks and another little restaurant there. Two more shops. A couple more shops around the back there as well, which would be difficult to see at the speed we'd need to go in. 
Another little place there, eating house, very similar to the one we just looked at a moment ago. And there we go, some more shops, they continue behind there. Seating area. Some more there, it looks like a duty free shop, yes it is. So there's a view outside, real pity they didn't actually include the glass, I mean that looks like you could literally walk off the edge of there and drop. That's a pity, it's the only thing that spoils this little thing. Um, but no, it's fine, um, a nice attention to detail. They've done very well to try and give us some sort of deception of detail here. Might even look better in the dusk and darkness hours. It's another view across the floor generally. <clears throat> okay, so we just come out land side of that building to the upper level, the rivals level, and you can see, just get a view of what it looks like from this side must say the car parks look really good even though they're not properly detailed the effect is good enough when you're not right up close just looking down the other direction there so again just tracking further east look at the rest of terminal one and the stands jetways are, are excellent the detail is good the stand layout is good very, very nice. Excellent scenery overall during the daytime. So again, nothing inside the building unfortunately. from the outside of the fence line. This is the land side boundary fence. Looks fine. So generally the airport looks good during the day. Um, lots of attention to detail. It's not all been done, but uh, I have no problem with what I've found so far. So let's have a look at dusk. Okay, so 20 past 8 in the evening, summertime, local time. Just pretty much after lights have come on. We're looking at Terminal 2 and Terminal 1 that we just visited a moment ago during the daytime. Lighting looks good. The uh, blue airfield edge lights are excellent. Here you've got the lights as well on the highways just outside and going into the airport. The signage is lit up too, which is a good thing and the uh, stand lighting is excellent. Let's go inside that building and see what the lighting, if any, is inside the building. So just looking from there, from the outside, you get an idea of the ambient lighting generally outside and inside the building. Again, the stands look fine. The cars and the bits and pieces underside of the building here is lit just nicely. So let's go inside the building. So here we are looking at Starbucks again. As I said, 20 past 8 in the evening. There's not an awful lot of light change inside the terminal. But it's acceptable, it's fine. Looking in the other direction, again, not much change. We really are missing the glass here would have been nice if you were going to do the inside of the terminal I thought at least you'd do the glass but uh, however so again ambient lighting around the terminals and the apron areas is excellent um, most of the dynamic vehicles as you can see have lights as well including the, um, um, the orange obstruction lights that go on top So we come up a bit, let's just have a look. So there you can see the car park in the middle. 
Um, again, ambient lighting looks excellent. Just the right amount of places are lit to give it a quite a nice effect in my opinion. Some might say that the blue airfield boundary lights are probably a bit too bright, certainly in the distance here. But again, it's acceptable. It's, um, it's very nice. No problem at all with it. So let's move across here and have a little look. A little bit of flickering of the lighting there. But as you can see, the stand layout and the general ambience around the airport, the lighting is really good. No taxiway centerline lights, but it may be because of the time of the evening. The runways are well defined. And they're just looking south across the terrain generally. Everything fits in. Just the whole lovely ambience about the place. So there's the uh, private aviation terminal there. We've got the Learjets and bits and pieces. Let's just have a look here your private jets. Lighting is very nice, control tower there, little car park. It's very nice, apart from the fact that those aircraft don't seem to have any, well yeah they have just about got landing gear but it looks really low. Lots of clutter. There's a highway. It looks quite good to have to say, even at close quarters. And again, unfortunately, we have this situation here where we've got floating lights. I really appreciate that it looks great from above. The moment you get high enough, it looks really good. But um, a situation like this it doesn't. However, in most cases, you're not going to be able to be flying this. Uh, near enough to notice the difference, I guess, so it's just a small point. Let's go up a bit. So there's a nice view looking across the airport. Ambient lighting looks great. Nice time of the day to fly. There, we're looking north across um, Greater Hollywood. Excellent. So let's have a look at night time. So there we are looking at the airport central area across the airport looking towards the uh, <coughs> towards the southeast. Got the moons out. It's a lovely clearless night. Clear night rather. It's ten past ten minutes after ten in the evening. Uh, lighting looks okay, not an awful lot has changed, but uh, it looks great, looks excellent. Again, you can see the roads um, are nicely lit, gives a really nice effect. So let's get a close-up look at the terminal apron areas and see what's changed, if anything. So just a little look at this cargo area that we didn't look at before. Again, this is night time, you've got the highway just to the north of it. Not an awful lot of lighting here. Helicopter pad there is not lit so you couldn't use that at night. And strangely enough no green centerline taxiway lighting to go along the taxiways. Just approaching the Terminal 2 finger. Now coming off on 
terminal to. I want to see what this building is like and see whether there's any lighting inside. Well, not really. That's um, okay, but unfortunately it's not really the effect we're looking for. If I go up close, interestingly enough, we can see the glass that was actually missing during the, the dusk and then the daytime hours. But the inside of the building isn't really lit in the way you might expect. Let's go inside. Okay, it's bright, but um, not, not heavily so. And again, looking outside, out of the window, the glass that we saw a moment ago basically isn't there. So these are probably just a couple of bits and pieces they could really touch up to improve the scenery and make it a lot more wholesome and complete. But as an airport, no complaints. Everything that you need as a pilot with an aircraft is there so far. So just looking at a typical stand at night, you know, all, all that you need. This, this jetway is really well developed. You've got the stairwell to the side that the dispatcher goes up, the docking door is all there there's lighting inside you've got the hydraulics and the wheels and the clutter on the tarmac such as this baggage vehicle they're all very detailed and nicely done the mod very very nicely modeled so let's have a look at terminal one and see if it's had the same treatment so coming up on terminal one here generally this all looks a bit brighter Again, you can see the inside from the outside. Stand lighting, apron lighting is good. So general outside lighting is excellent. This car's even got lights on there, which is good news. Now again, from the outside look, we can see inside. It's not bright, but we can see inside. And again, we can see the, the, see the lattice effect of the glass from this side. I don't know if it's me, but this looks a bit brighter than the T2 Terminal 2 did. Not a lot, but it does. And once again, we're missing the illusion of the glass from inside looking out. So once again, just looking at the central area generally, looking at the lighting effects of the car park down here, this is very nice very subtle just just the kind of thing you want subtle lighting around here the roads are nicely lit with the colors road signs all of this looks very nice it's ambient it's not overdone fits in well and looking out across the airport there towards the coast looking eastwards looks lovely so let's have a look at dawn so here's the same view, looking east across the airport towards the, towards the coast. It's dawn, it's just after 6.30 a.m., it's just before the lights go out. Just wanted to see what this looks like. That's a nice view. Looking south, road signs are still lit, yet there's a glow across the airport thanks to the sunset, sunrise. Looks quite nice. Can't see much of a, an effect on these buildings by the sunrise. Uh, some other sceneries you'd see a kind of a glow on some of these buildings because the sun's pointing directly at them. But let's bring the sun up a bit more and see whether that changes. Well there you go, it's 6.45 now, another 12 minutes. All the lights have gone out. And now you can see the sun is actually casting shadows as we expect it would be. So that same view out to the east there, you can see the roads. The signs are not lit anymore. The sun's just above the horizon. Looks quite good. And the view across the airport generally looks really nice. 
So it's now 7.30 a.m. and the sun is well up. Shadows are in the right place. The airport and the surroundings look really good. Everything fits in. I particularly like the foliage on the fauna, the way this has all been done. As you can see, it just fits in very nicely. Um, it just gives the place some atmosphere. Sun's well up now, just looking across the threshold of 28 right down here towards the northeast. There's the fuel farm, and you've got uh, hotels and bits and pieces across the front there. And a look to the northwest. It's very nice. Very nice. So just a tracking shot from high up there to show you got the two runways and the airport generally. Uh, do I like the scenery? Yes, it's very impressive. It um, again makes a huge difference and it's a good example of what you can achieve in this new simulator. So looking northwest, as you can see, you've got the lead-in rights to runway 28 right there. Um, you've got the inshore bits and pieces here. Yes, I like it a lot. Um, just a disclaimer while we're on the subject. Again, I purchased this scenery. I own it. I wasn't given it free to review for Latin VFR. I actually own the scenery and the views and opinions expressed are my own. Um, I think it's nicely priced. Um, there are a lot of things that haven't been done, which are done in other sceneries, but then this scenery has more than enough to make it A, worth the price, and B, to make it something you should include if you plan to explore South Florida. It's exceptional. Can't wait to fly back in here. I flew out to San Martin last week from here, and we'll be making a flight, which I'll probably record in this adventure, be making a flight back in here too. So I hope you have found that review useful. Um, now I want to just take the helicopter out eastwards from the airport towards the coastline that you're looking at. Have a look at the coastline area, the cruise ships and the docks. And just to see how well it blends in and also to show you one or two anomalies before we complete this review. So we're just going to head out over the harbour here, have a look at these cruise ships. Just really, not, as I said, I'm not sure if this is part of the Latin VFR scenery. But I'm going to have a look at it because I want to give you some idea of the ambience and the atmosphere that surrounds this place. I mean, this part of South Florida looks beautiful. The airport's excellent, it's, be it's an excellent addition. Um, and you've got loads to explore here. So lowish resolution ground textures, but uh, not a problem. 
it does look good. That cruise ship looks excellent. <laughs> and a couple of uh, ships out in the bay too. Stunning. Really, really good. If this is Latin VFR, they've done a cr cracker job by um, going way beyond the airport boundary. Let's uh, head round to the beach. A couple of block ships here that uh, aren't really done. That probably could be a Sobo, I don't know, we'll see. As you can see, they're just attempts to uh, draw the scenery that haven't really worked. Beautiful shoreline down here though. Lots of hotels, inlets, bits and pieces. Very nice. Let's get out onto the beach here. Yeah, so we've got these anomalies, which I've seen before. But other than that, it's fine, it's, it's, it's good. As you can see, this part of South Florida has a stunning coastline. I'm definitely going to go and take a Cessna down towards Marathon and Key West at some point. So we'll whiz in here, we'll do an approach to 28 right. Give you some idea of what it looks like. see a really stunning shoreline, very nice. So just coming in at 700 feet. slowly getting better at my landings um, with this bird but I'm not there yet so hopefully we can do a re half decent landing here so, so so this is the approach to 28 right which I suspect will look really nice at dawn or dusk the power lines there too. Interestingly up we're just above the version of slope, slope indicators and it didn't look as though I was very far from those power lines. Although there's a lot of things that they've done, that a lot of things that haven't been done in this scenery, there's an awful lot that has. Things like fence line, pension to detail, signs, road signs, exceptionally good. And 
they've even dirted the uh, threshold and the toy right sign. <laughs> Very nice. So let's see if I can put this thing down over here. There you go, that's got to be one of the best landings I've ever done. Pleased with that. So there you go, a little quick tour around the eastern end of the airport and the Bay Area, having a look at the ships. Thanks very much, hope you enjoyed that. So folks, if you like this scenery or if you like um, my, the, the, what I do and the reviews I do, um, I ask you please if you can support me by just liking and subscribing. Hit the bell for notifications to let you know when videos come out. I release videos every Saturday, usually around noon UK time. Um, mostly it's a couple of videos, sometimes two or three or four, but often I plan to at least get one out every Saturday. I do um, adventure reviews, adventure flights in P3D and in flights in 2020 and I do reviews of scenery in 2020 as well. I think it's a great simulator, I'm loving it, I can't wait for some more study level aircraft so we can do uh, transatlantic hops and stuff like that. Um, but the potential for this simulator is excellent and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So thanks for your support. I've got a website as well, virtualairlinepilot.org. I'm not a real world pilot. I worked at airports all of my life. I've done 40 years in aviation security, but I've never been able to do a pilot's license. However, I've been flying a computer for getting on for 38 years. I was a beta tester for Microsoft many, many years ago on the 747. Um, my virtual logbook has over 15,000 flying hours in it. So I've been at this quite a while. But I've only been doing videos and content creation like this for just coming up on about a year. So I'd like to say thank you to all the subscribers, to the people who've supported me, to those people who've contacted me and offered suggestions about how I can improve videos and how I can improve the content. I'm really grateful for your help and for your advice. It's fantastic. Um, visit me at virtualairlinepilot.org. Find out a bit more about my life and what I did before this. And uh, again, thank you very much for joining me, and I will see you in the next video. So this is Lee, Virtual Airline Pilot, saying goodbye for now, and thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.